All right, hi there. This is Dr. Matthew J. Trom. This is the first video in the sixth lecture in the engineering design course. Uh, let me just spend a minute, as I do at the beginning of every lecture, uh, explaining how the videos are structured. Uh, so I found that um, about seven minutes is the length of time that uh, someone can sit and really focus on one of these video presentations. And so what I'll do is speak for about seven minutes. Um, and then when we get to that seven minute mark, uh, I'll pause, uh, stop recording. Uh, that's the end of first video. And then you guys can go take a break. Uh, and when you're ready to come back and uh, give me seven more minutes of focus, uh, you can come back and start the next video. And we'll keep doing that essentially until we exhaust the slide deck. So, so that's how things are organized. Okay, without any further ado, let's jump into uh, the first video. Um, so I'm going to talk today essentially about two things. Uh, the first is <coughs> establishing a functional level uh, that you use to address your design problem. Um, and to do that, I'm going to introduce something called the functional analysis method. Um, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, to sort of frame for you this, this idea of uh, what I mean by establishing the functional level, uh, by now, you guys, I think, have discovered in your design processes that design problems uh, can have many different levels of detail, from the very, very large to the very, very small. Um, and even though you're solving the same problem, um, the functional level that you choose really very strongly defines um, what it is and how it is that you solve that, that particular design challenge. So uh, I'll give you two examples here to tell you what I'm talking about. Um, the first is uh, imagine you're an engineer and you're asked to design a telephone. Well, that could be anything from a very, very small problem of designing uh, a handset. So, for example, uh, you know, if I didn't have uh, earphones on, this would be a handset that I would use to, to speak to somebody. So, um, you know, how does this operate and function? Um, that could be a design problem um, all in and of itself. Um, not such a large problem. Um, on the other extreme is the design of an entire telecommunication system. So how does that little handset that I just showed you connect with um, a hardwired or a cellular communication network that is national or international in scale and communicate with other people in real time and so forth. So that's a much larger uh, design problem <coughs> at uh, a much higher functional level. So it gives you sort of a sense of um, the different scales that I'm talking about. Um, another example that, that's more kind of fun and tongue-in-cheek um, is the example of a doorknob. So you can start with a doorknob and you can scale up and you can say, well, I'm not just going to look at the doorknob. I'm going to look at the door and the hinges and the building. And uh, really the purpose of a doorknob is to allow somebody to enter and to exit a building. And so, um, you know, I can then come up with a number of different solutions for entering and exiting a building that don't even necessarily need to involve a doorknob. So for example, um, I give a picture here. Um, this is a, a scene from the movie Home Alone, uh, where one of the criminals decides to try to, to enter the house of the main character uh, to rob the house, um, essentially through the dog door. So that's an example of a, a human you know, crossing through a, a threshold into a home uh, where no doorknob is involved. Uh, the, the second uh, possible sort of extreme um, is if you, if you start at the level of a doorknob and you simplify down, um, the purpose of a doorknob really is just to hold the door closed, uh, you know, so it doesn't swing open in the wind and allow somebody to come by and, and unlatch it and open the door, close it behind them and then relatch it so that, again, the wind doesn't blow the door open. And so I give you an example here of a much more simple solution that does essentially the same thing that a doorknob does. Doorknob does. It keeps the door closed. Uh, it allows a person to come and latch and unlatch when they want to go through the door. Um, so those are different examples of functional levels um, that address the question of how do you design a doorknob. But um, if your client happens to be, say, a doorknob manufacturer, and you present one of those two or both of those solutions uh, to your client saying, look, I've solved the problem without needing the doorknob, um, your doorknob manufacturer client is not going to be very happy. So um, it is important um, to take into account the level of detail and the functional level um, that you want to set your design at so that you don't either oversimplify or overcomplicate um, the design problem and that you stay within um, the, the constraints uh, imposed by the um, customer need statement provided by your client. Now, there are instances, and, and I will talk about them, um, 
where um, you do need to change the functional level, change the focus of your design, um, usually that's to widen the focus. And the reason for that most often um, is you run out of possible design solutions from your various ideation approaches, uh, remember brainstorming and so forth. Um, and so by changing the functional level of your design, um, you can um, generate new ideas and new creativity through, uh, through ideation. So that's usually the reason um, that you want to change the functional level dramatically. Um, so given that, that it's important both to set the right functional level um, and that uh, we do want to be able to be a little bit flexible in moving up in functional level and down in functional level as we need to to facilitate uh, ideation and, and solutions to design problems, um, it's important to have a way of um, considering different problem levels and essentially deciding <coughs> whether you've selected the, the right one or not. Um, and so the way that, that I suggest doing this is not by considering different types of solutions, the telephone handset versus the nationwide telecommunication system. Those are, are types of solutions. Instead, um, it's good to consider um, essential functions described by your customer need statement by your clients, um, and then attempting to satisfy those customer needs by identifying functions or subfunctions that will do those tasks. So um, in that spirit, um, I will introduce to you guys something called the function analysis method. But uh, I'm almost at seven minutes, so I'm going to take a quick pause here and let you guys have a quick break. Um, and I'll come back and we'll talk more about the functional analysis method um, in the next video. So see you guys after the break.